we're live. Poof. There Gail. We so okay, let me let me we're gonna tech really quick here. Let me go to welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go to YouTube. That's the one I'm do you want me to send you the one on YouTube or Twitter? Whatever. I don't use Twitter at all. I'm not Twitter proficient. On Twitter. I like it ever since Elon bought it. It's been a freaking interesting thing over there. So um I have a Twitter, but I, I've never posted on it. I don't use it. But I do have an account. Let me see. How do I do this? Your channel. Okay, here we go. I see the, the live here. It might okay, here's this. And I'm gonna send it to your Instagram. And yep. so you're primarily on Instagram. What is your Instagram for everybody? It's at Canine Coach UK. At Canine Coach UK, and you are doing things over on Instagram, man. I'm doing bits. I'm doing bits. I that's where I would say I spend most of my time on social media. I don't have Facebook. I do have a TikTok, but TikTok's um, for the younger generation. I feel. Yeah. The comment section is crazy. The lives are crazy. Instagram's more. It's more community based. I feel. Oh, I've got the link. So I just sent it to you. Now I am going to attempt to share this on Instagram myself. So how do I do that? <laughs> so reels more create, create, select from the computer. No, sorry, you guys, we're doing this on the fly. The I'm trying to tech. Well, whatever. You need to just put a link. Oh, you can't see that. But it's more, is it, how do I do my story on the computer? Here, do you know what? I'll just do it here. I have another phone here. So while I'm doing that, and then have you shared it yet? Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm going to share it on my phone. And everybody else, while you're watching this, I don't care if you're watching it after the fact, hit that share button if you don't mind. And um, head over to Instagram. Make sure you're following the UK dog coach, Canine Coach UK, right? Canine Coach UK. That's my Instagram. I just want to make everyone watching aware that we have a little teeny tiny co-host that's going to be here the whole time. Where'd mine Where's go? Yours? Where's your little One, dog? One, two, three, four, five. I got like six or seven in here actually, but are the they one all, are they all um, on place. No, nope. they just know. They just know how to behave. They're scrambling right now. Oh, I have I one dog mean, that's please. eighteen. <laughs> I know. I'm a I glutton. Like it. Well, they do. I mean, all these guys are pretty much older. I have a couple younger dogs. Um, and then I have an 18 year old dog that I have to keep tethered. I mean, otherwise okay. he just, and so he's over here, my 18 year old. And then I have a, a dog room out in the barn as well. And then I have a bunch of dogs out there. What uh, residential board and train. Yep. Yep. Not board and train, just boarding right now. I'm not really training too much. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of taking care of the dogs that I've previously worked with. Yeah. Um, maintaining the training, maintaining the training. That's right. And there's a prerequisite in order to board with me that you do yeah. have to have, you know, training. I don't want to work with somebody that is on a different wavelength. You know, I want to work with somebody that, you know, shares the, the, um, you know, the interest that I have, but, but I mean, shares the value of a trained dog and what that is and, and how it benefits the dog's life. Mm -hmm. um you know no, i think a lot of people are willing to put that work in to access that boarding aren't they because it's so hard to find somebody that you trust to look after your dogs amazingly when there's so many dog professionals but it is very hard to find a trusted person i think yeah well and i think that it's also especially nowadays have yeah. you guys noticed an influx with dogs in the uk yeah massive yeah. since the pandemic yeah yeah massive Everyone yep. has a dog now. Everyone that wanted a dog got one in lockdown, I think. And some of them have dogs. Well, and it's a lot of times they're using the lockdown excuse too, you know. And so we'll we'll talk about that. But first, I want to I want to introduce you, and I want people. So Gail and I talked a while ago. When was it? I mean, a few years ago. Oh, I went on your YouTube channel. It said one year ago, but it definitely no. wasn't one year ago, was it? I'm no, that's sure when I uploaded really everything to YouTube. That was before this thing went to YouTube and um, the program that I use went to YouTube okay. and Twitter and everything. So everything went to Facebook. And so then I took all my stuff on Facebook and then uploaded it at once. Right. And so the, the accurate, so. Ooh, let yeah. me see. I can find out right now, man. But um, we it's been a while, right? It has and, been a while. 
It has been a lot. I think probably quite a lot's changed since last time we spoke as well, because now I'm working primarily online. And last time we spoke, I was probably working primarily residential training, I would say. So a lot has has changed since then. Yeah, I don't think I was Napopo Gold last time I talked to you as well. You weren't? I think I was just silver. I, I don't know. It was we're gonna about f- three years ago. Yeah, we're gonna find out right this second. I know it was a long time ago, so my hair was completely blonde, and that was that was a few years ago. Well, and I have long hair now. <laughs> Is it as long as your beard? Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay, look, December eighth, two thousand nineteen. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Let so me show you. Three years. Hold on, I gotta show you I'm because actually... you gotta you gotta see you, man. Yeah, I look different. Do you see you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you both look different. Go, we look old. Damn it. Isn't that funny, man? I can look in the mirror sometimes and I start laughing. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh, who's this guy? All right. I like it though. I like it. You um, can't, when you're on Instagram, you can't really avoid looking in the mirror because obviously on stories, you have to be quite active. You have to show your face and show your personality. So unfortunately, I have to look at my own face every day. So there's no shocks to me there. But you're good at it, dude. Like that's what I like about your content is that it makes me chuckle and you just have really good points. And and how did you, so what, how did you learn about the Instagram thing? And how did you like? Literally you- trial and error trial and error and I think as well a lot of people don't have the confidence to speak on camera and a lot of people don't have the confidence to make themselves look stupid like you said about making you chuckle I don't care if I look silly in the video that's fine I don't do dancing I don't do the dancing I've got to draw the line somewhere but I don't mind looking silly looking dumb in the name of education so I think a lot of people don't want to do that so I think that's what helped me grow you do wear Crocs in your video, which is way worse Always. than dancing. <laughs> Why not? Wait. It's real. Hold on. <laughs> you have them around. Mine are just at the side here. I've got the furry <laughs> ones now. So it's real, isn't it? You can't, it's I real. Think you were trying to dress up for the internet every single day in what you don't normally wear. You'd never post anything. It's curated. Right. Yeah. And people people know when things are authentic and yeah. people can see, especially with the the consistency, right? And when um we have a long timeline of consistency, right? Yeah. Um, not only is that good for people, but that's also good for dogs. Yeah. Right. People enjoy that. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I think there's no there's no sense in being fake because like you said, a dog knows when you're being fake. So those People can spot it as well. People are not as good. Dogs are much better at spotting when you're fake. But people that are inauthentic don't have much success with dogs anyway. So I'm sure their business goes hand in hand. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times there's some there's some people that are like kind of snake oil salesmen. Do you know <laughs> what snake oil salesman is in the UK? No. Okay, so here in the United well, that's what States, he does. He probably knows what that means. So in the, in the United States, back in the Wild West, right when we were a new country, uh, we the people would go out and um, they would be these guys that would hawk all sorts of goods and and there was this thing called the snake oil, right. and it was supposed to be a cure all, okay. and it would cure all anything that ailed you, right? Do they sell it but, from inside their trench coat. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's a bell. Yeah. All right. So, sn- yeah. snake oil salesman. What would a UK be? What would be? What would something? It's probably the same. I probably just don't know it. Yeah, but it's, it's like they're ringing the bell. Now you're saying it. Do you know uh, what I'm saying? Though how it pertains to the dog industry. Um, go a little bit deeper on that one. Making false promises. Yes, yeah, right? that's a big problem. That is and a big doing, problem. doing what feels good and only what feels good. Yes, political, but yes. Yes, I do know what you're saying. I think a lot of the time, um, this is the problem now with dog training, is that owners don't trust dog trainers. And I support them. I understand why they don't. Because a lot of dog, you know, obviously I don't know what it's like where you live, but in the UK, anyone can be a dog trainer. Anyone. There's no 
legislation, which I don't support legislation, by the way, but there is no legislation for being dog trained. There's no official certificate. There's no official degree or anything like that. So anyone can wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a dog trainer and I'm going to charge £5,000 for a board and train. And as long as they have good sales, they will get clients. And obviously, as we know, it takes years to be able to, I think it takes years to be able to do a successful board and train in 21 days, done and dusted, it's all done. And then what happens is people spend that £5,000 with them and then they come to someone like me or you and they don't want to spend any more money because they've already been conned out of thousands of pounds. Yes. So I think there is a lot of falsifying and a lot of it comes down to people just want to make money. Well, and a lot of times they're in the same situation or worse yeah. than, than they went to the trainer with. Now they're dealing yeah. with a dog that is reactive or has, I mean, they don't use e-collars in the UK. Um, do they? they yeah, don't. it's legal. They do? In England, it is legal. it's legal. In Wales, which is just over, still UK, it's legal there, but it is legal here, yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. see people using improperly use of e-collars? Of course. Of course. Um, but I do see people using them properly now as well because I think thanks to online education, to be honest. Yes. Reaching and that's a wide variety of people. That's what I've been doing more and more of, and that's what I wanted to discuss with you too, is like because you have how many how many online students do you have? Uh, it's over seventeen hundred now. Which is yeah, it's very exciting. It's very Can exciting. You imagine having a class of seventeen hundred dogs in person. That that would be insane. That would be fun. But I don't know if anyone gets to hear anything I was saying, but yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. But that what a great way to leverage yourself. What yeah. a great way, especially what we were talking about earlier, how there's an influx of dogs. How can we, as professionals, help more people? Yeah. And we have this Zoom technology. And um, and so I want to talk to you about, like, what does that look like? And I'll, I'll tell you what my program looks like, too. Yeah. And then anybody who's interested will drop some links in the comments. Um, if if uh, you're across the pond in the UK or even if you're here. I mean, you, we have clients all over the world, right? Yes, everywhere. Everywhere absolutely everywhere and i think it's because what i try to do with my online lessons instead of how to train your dog i've broken them down so one is how to stop your dog pulling on lead one is how to get your dogs to come when you call so instead of doing how to train your dog i've broken them down so it's more digestible and just try to take all of that you know the jargon out of it like where dog trainers try and make things very very complicated to, to make it seem harder than it is yeah. i've tried to make it as easy as humanly possible and i think that's why so many people are having success with it and i get people send me videos from new zealand canada all over the world which obviously i would never normally be able to speak to those people so i think dog trainers and social media gets quite a bad rep but i actually think it's really amazing when you use it right when you use it for education when you use it for community instead of using it for arguments and debates and promotion and and yeah. for you know um like we were saying like curation right to be yeah. authentic do you ever like were you are you ever have an idea or you're like oh man i gotta do this right now what like, for filming no, no yeah for filming for your tiktok or do you do you oh, write stuff I, down i don't okay. plan it out i don't it's not planned okay. at all i just make the videos on the spot when i think of the idea yeah sometimes totally. I in the car make the video carry on driving where i'm going i don't plan anything out i don't i'm not a no, I'm not an actress like that. I just think, oh, that's a good idea. Or I'll be listening to a song on my headphones and I'll think, oh, yeah, I could use that for a video and then I'll use it. But I do obviously look in the reels as well and I watch what other people do and I take inspiration from them. Do you have any type of, of script or anything that you go off of or any bullet points that you're like reading off of? No. Or you no. just let it flow, huh? La, la, la. Yeah, it's just let the magic happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of those, I just... Um, if you leave me to talk all day, I will talk all day. So, yeah, I mean, we've done five day schools and I lose my voice by the end of the week okay. because I just do not stop talking. So, yeah, I don't find it difficult to think of things because as well, I'm living and breathing dogs. So all day, every day, things are happening. And I think, oh, someone might find that useful. Or someone might find that interesting. And then I jump on the story and say it there and then. You know, like if you're out on the dog walk, off leash dog runs over. People obviously are dealing with that every single day. Do you have leash laws where you live? Yep. Look at this. 
Henry. Is that a Chihuahua? A chihuahua, yeah. He's about six months old. Oh, he's a and, baby. Yeah, he was such. This guy was very, very fearful. Yeah. Yeah. Can Is you he hear yours? Me? No. No, I'm working with him, um, and and just we're we're working on his confidence. Yeah. Right, but these these, but now he he's he's a little overconfident. <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> you know, we're going to bring it, reel it back in. Do you have right. leash laws where you live? We do. Ab absolutely, we do. And, and we have um, people like uh, that will stake you out. And it's expensive. It's, like it's 120 bucks here in Seattle. Well, that's the fine. Okay, so with that little dog, Henry, you don't have to worry that dog's going to run on top of him or it still happens. No, I, I, I keep them segregated. And no, I, I mean, when that. you're out, when you're out and about walking the dog on the lead, is there a chance that that dog will get jumped on by another dog? N not if I'm walking them because I'm an advocate, but you know, but it absolutely could. Like I encounter dogs all the time that I'm like, who's, do whose dog is this? And when oh, I would right. do my large pack walks, I remember I'm like, I walk and I'm like, well, there's another dog here. <laughs> Right, that's joined your walk. Yeah, that's joined right. the walk. You know, and I'm like, who? And it, because we walked by a dog park, and the dog got out of the dog park, and then just joined our walk, saw something interesting that they liked, and and Had a much uh, better time, I imagine. And then I remember one time too, like I felt I was walking, and all of a sudden I feel my dogs like pulling the other way, and I'm like, I turn around, and there's this little boy f f with an ice cream cone feeding the dogs, my dogs, and, I, and I'm just like, I look, and his parents are taking pictures. And I'm like, get your freaking kid out. Okay. What are you, like, what are you doing, dude? Like, this is not like, and they're luckily my dogs were, you know, but it, that could have been a recipe for disaster if, yeah. if, um, you know, and it's just people, people have a different idea of the, of the dog. I don't know, man. Like people just have this. And a lot of times it's, it's, it's their own perception overlaid upon the animal. Right. Um, mm -hmm. right. And here, let me see. Can you do your here? I want to see if I can do your headline. Do you see brand over there on the right of the screen? Yeah. Hit brand. And it hits show headline. It says, oh, no, I don't have that. Oh, you don't? How the heck do I do it where I can show your headline? Hold on. I'm going to try it here. Here, watch this. Okay, what is it? Canine UK Coach or Canine Coach UK, That's right? Canine Coach UK. Canine Coach UK. You know that I own dogcoach.com? Told you that, oh, right? Annoying. Canine Coach UK. Watch this. Ready? Uh -huh. Boom. Look at your name. Techie. Doing it. <laughs> That's brand new, too. Brand you should really too. hire a teenager to do all your tech stuff because they know it all. Oh, I am looking. You know, and I have some helpers and the best helpers that I have ever had are like, tw like 20 year old, yeah. lady, like, like millennials. That, yeah. And they're, they're just no joke, man. They get to work and I love it. Yeah. You know? but and, why not? Why not outsource to someone who finds something like that so easy? Oh, I will. I need yeah. to. What I need to is I also need to take and somebody to go through all these interviews that I've done. I've done over 150 of them, some of, of wow. them three hours long. And just take out these little snippets of pearls of information and then yeah. repurpose them for reels, right? And then for TikToks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I want to visit the comments really quick. Um, oh, we've got comments, have we? We do. And guys, comment down below. Let me know because we're doing this is a international live stream right now. So we are That's legit. Cool. Matt says, what's up? What up, Matt? Matt got one of my dogs. Lucky um, Matt. Yeah, one of my skipper keys. Uh, exactly. Snake oil salesman is perfect to describe most Americans in the dog scene. Mm -hmm. And I get it, man, because like we love these dogs. Yeah. Right? And and the thing is, is that people try to think with their emotions because we love them so much that I think that the emotional state kind of overtakes that logical um mm -hmm mind what do you what do you think about I, that? I think people can't accept that they love something that doesn't love them back Ooh. I, like i have this list of chihuahua on my lap i loved the dog obviously but it is a dog just because it's sitting on my lap doesn't mean it's cuddling me it's just a comfortable place to sit 
If I put mm. it down on the rug next to me, it will lay down there and go to sleep as well. So I think people think, oh, they're snuggling up to me. They're just snuggling up. And I think people struggle with that. They want they want their, their dog to reciprocate their feelings and, and they can't because they're a dog. But there's nothing wrong with that. Why can't we appreciate them for what they are? A different species, they're fantastic, they're amazing. They do things differently to us uh, in a way that's fascinating. It's fascinated me for the last 10 years. I can't get enough of watching them and living with them and being with them. But I also don't think that they feel the same way about me that I feel about them. Yeah. There's yeah, definitely well, a bond there. There's definitely a bond, but it's not the same as two humans. Well, and you you got to realize that by insisting what the nature of the bond is a toxic characteristic. Yeah. 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 I think people yeah. struggle to take it at face value of what it is. It's That's almost right. like they're, they're offended to hear that. If you say the dog doesn't love them back, they are offended by it. So I think it's, it's, it's a difficult subject. It's a difficult conversation to have for someone, especially if the dog is their world, which for a lot of people it is. You know, when people say that their dogs are their children, they're not dumb. They're not idiots. They mean it. They mean they love and care for that dog regardless of anything else. They do mean it when they say that. Um, and I think, you know, I, I don't know how harmful it is that they call the dog the children. I think that's okay as long as they don't think it is a human child. Yeah, that's it's, it's it. kind of a surrogate notion of the concept of like how powerful yeah. the relationship is between a per paternal relationship, right? And it's yeah. just kind of conveys the power of that. It doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, I birthed them myself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know it's that's what i tell sometimes i tell people i'm like yeah that dog over there i birthed them <laughs> yeah but i think <laughs> things like that are okay to say they're just not you, as long as people are not taking them literally they don't literally think it's a child like for example i put a jumper on my dog if i put a tutu on my dog it doesn't mean i'm less of a dog trainer or it's less of a dog it just means the dog's wearing a tutu you know what? That's that's what I get to do, man. That's my because that's all the stuff that they get to torture me by. I get to torture them a little bit with some tutus or you know, I love that stuff. Like I, I dress them up, especially in the winter time, and and oh, you um, have to, don't you? And, and you have to. Santa and elf costumes and Siobhan is here. Good to see you. And Siobhan's doing really good on uh, TikTok as well. I haven't seen one of these in quite oh, a while. Doing TikTok. Oh, yeah, Vanessa, Vanessa Law. She says that you are the goat, the greatest of all time. So personable, hey, funny, and real. That's why I, I love you too, is because you're real, man. You know, um, Gail Lucy, how are you, girl? Teresa, Teresa's hey. awesome. What up, Teresa? Because you're not on Facebook anymore. Everyone's, yeah. everyone's <laughs> on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook either. Well, I am, but like 1% of what I was, and it's primarily now just my business. Like it's just an avenue for the business. And, and these live streams are so popular on this Facebook that um, a lot of people get value out of this. So I want to continue these as, as, as much as possible. Uh, we have somebody tuning in from Serbia. Look at worldwide, you guys. Worldwide. Um, so glad Lucy, Gail Lucy is too. Um, it's fun. It's funny, isn't it? You know, it's dead. Do you know what people call me? Go on. Bob. Okay. Why? Bow Wow Bob. Okay. It's like Bow Wow Bill and Bob are interchangeable. I think just the B, right? Okay. And the, the, the name that comes to mind with people is just Bob. And so I own BowWowBob.com too. <laughs> I own just it. In uh, case. Just in case, because it's what just people. In case. And listen like listen there's a good point in that because just yeah. like we're saying about how people say like this is my baby this is my fur child this is whatever like and and just like people call me bow wow bob like mm -hmm. it's it's something that i can't control it's just what is and i choose to listen to it and to observe it right and mm -hmm. not to pass judgment upon it but to make decisions that yeah. would benefit me in 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 knowing that right and so it's just the knowledge base that we we have and 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 to try to think with those emotions is impossible like we have to have this knowledge base and then we have our emotions as well and and sometimes we get those i, I think a little bit mixed up i don't i don't know uh, yeah but i don't think dog owners are at fault i think the big 
Martin the Shings that talk about dog training, um, mm. you know, that talk to normal people that just have normal dogs, not sport dogs, working dogs, just normal people trying to walk their dog down the street. They are absolutely bombarded with emotive messages about dogs. Nothing practical. It's all emotive. So I think most people are even raised with the advert. I don't know what it's like where you live, but even the adverts on the television, the adverts for mm -hmm. rescues and the big organizations that have all the money to push the marketing are very highly emotive. So I think it's even subconscious because people say things like, oh, well, isn't that cruel? Even when they look at a dog enjoying themselves doing something. Like I saw there, I didn't even know this was a thing. I saw this on TikTok, that people think that collies herding sheep is forcing them to work. Normal people that have normal dogs and don't have any experience of working dogs. Obviously, you and I know that you can't force a dog to work. They have to intrinsically enjoy it to complete their job. We know that. But I think these emotionally loaded statements aren't even really people's thoughts. I feel like they're, it's in their subconscious now because they've been absolutely well, programmed. Yeah, programmed, yeah, to, to think first with emotions and second with logic because that's what gets donations. So, well, and there's a couple things to, to, to this, right? First and foremost, any new information, and this is what's very unique about the human being, any new information before it's disseminated is first held against beliefs before it's like deconstructed. Does that make sense? So there's like a barrier of beliefs that we have, a predetermined, right, notions that we have that could be 100% wrong. And yeah. so before that's that is a fallacy, right, yeah. to look and to stop and look, oh, well, I don't believe that instead of just considering it and looking instead of allowing for that firewall of of predetermination to to. Um, make a decision that might be incorrect or make an assumption or, or, um, or something that, that is, is off the charts. And the other thing here is that knowing emotional states, it's very interesting to know that people are 10 times more likely to act based on emotion yeah. than they are on pure intellect by itself, right? Yeah. And so that's why these companies... Yeah. Do you do you know Sarah McLaughlin? No. Do you have that commercial that there's a there's a singer Sarah McLaughlin in the arms of the angel? No, I don't know it, but thanks. <laughs> I can't watch it because it'll make you cry because it's all these puppies and stuff and the Sarah is I don't it's been a while since it's been aired. Yeah. But like literally, it was so emotional that you couldn't freaking watch it, man. And, yeah. and, and that's it. It's like they want to get this, their product. They want to get whatever it is that they're trying to sell you yeah. into the emotional light. And so you are 10 times more likely to act than you are just to, to um, if you were to just intellectualize it, you know? Yeah. And obviously the big marketing budgets know this. Yeah. And a lot of these companies right. have, very very deep pockets yeah. and not only that but not it's also interesting if we even trace this back to skinner and pavlov like this was a marketing budget and why these guys got such a good budget to study behavior it is mm -hmm. for big companies like when you start to follow the money folks like anytime we, we look at um you know any of that stuff even darwin darwin was from the wedgwood pottery family it's it's so cool. That's uh, I like doing that, but that's a little political too, and won't get into that right now. But just know that that there's an endless amount of money that is focused on manipulating people, yeah. right? And that's what it is. It's straight up manipulation. Yeah. And then I think people maybe hear this and then think, "Oh, we're hypocritical," because obviously we also take money from dog training, but. I mean, my lessons are 75 pounds and the marketing budget I'm talking about is millions, millions, millions. of pounds. They're, they're, they're multi-million dollar corporations. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're massive. So yeah, obviously we make a living of dog training, uh, but, but not millions. That would be nice. I'm going to see what P&G marketing budget is. <laughs> You're actually looking Proc up. Procter & Gamble marketing budget, 8.1 billion Wow, 
That's Procter and Gamble, right? Yeah. And that's ad spent in the United States, eight point one billion. So that's yeah. just in the United States, eight point one billion dollars. Yeah. Right. So a huge, a huge numbers, right? Um, and I see. I wanted to shout out, and I want us to take a second here. This gal named Jill. She's one of my hundred dollar Patreon subscribers. Okay. Isn't that freaking awesome? Yeah. You know, and so thank you, thank you, Jill. I appreciate it from my heart. Thank you for um, finding value in what I do and, and supporting me in my endeavors. And if anybody else, um, I'll put a link to the Patreon um, in the comments below. If you want to support what I do here, please do. I, I'm just kind of leaving the money over there on Patreon until I get a little budget to purchase some camera gear. And uh, someday maybe I'll come across the pond and come see you. Do, do this live in person. I do want to do that. I want to meet people. I want to shake hands. I want to see what they're all about. I want to meet your dogs and, you know, and just see how things I don't are know different. If you want to meet my dogs. I know. I don't know if you want to meet my dogs. <laughs> Have you got a bite, Sue? Do you, uh, do you watch any of our stuff on PBK9? Do you um, watch any I, of our bite work? I don't. I haven't been. You, you know what? Any jokey videos on Canine Coach, I see. Okay. Yep, that's what I do uh, primarily. You, you should know. head over there and see because. Then you might regret saying you want to meet our dogs. Well, I do want to get a, a Demonte. Um, what is the professional that 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 one suit that they have is two grand, and I'm yeah. really really thinking about pulling the trigger, just because it allows, especially for people like us that work with family dogs, if we have any type of aggression, right, a pit bull or something like that here, it just provides that insurance, right? That we oh, you can wear it for. For training a dog, a pet dog, just in case. Uh, if I had a reactive, crazy ass dog, yeah, because okay. I, I want something like that, like a professional one, right? In case, mm -hmm. and and so it's very uh, not cumbersome and and doesn't look like I'm, you know, okay. stay puffed marshmallow man. I want to, I want something that if that dog chooses to nail me, and I want to put myself in a situation where I want to invite that dog kind of to nail me in a way like, and what I mean here is when I first started training dogs and I'll always remember this, I was like, all right, you guys, we're done with this lesson. And I'm like, okay, you guys, we'll, we'll see you next week. Work on what I told you. All right, take care. And I turned around and guess what happened? Go on. The dog nailed me as one of the hardest bites that I've ever had in my ass. Right. Oh, it hurts so bad. Did you see it come in? No. Oh. <laughs> no. That was like, I. that's where I was just like, that taught me, right? We learn stuff. Yeah. Right? And sometimes we learn stuff the hard way. Yeah. And I remember I was on my way to another lesson and my ass hurt so bad. Like it was, and it was like blue. And um, I'll always remember that. But I think that there's there's value. I mean, of course, I'd have a dog on a line or I'd have all these different precautions now. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think that it would be valuable if I could, you know, turn around and let that dog if if to, to really trust that dog, if they do have, um, you know, that I don't know, that, that display of aggression just to have that, I don't know, that 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 line of insurance. I don't, you know, Have you I done don't any decoying or no. Okay. No. And I would work on that with, with my friends that are decoys and I'd go to yeah. some seminars and stuff like that. But this wouldn't be for a decoy. This would be more no, know, like to was, save my body. Having, I was having this conversation with my husband the other day. We were saying about how, you know, working with aggression in pet dogs is actually massively enhanced by working with controlled aggression in protection, in bike sports, um, working in the suit, handling dogs, switching aggression on and off, you know, because obviously in, when we talk about aggression in pet dog training, it's always a bad thing. But obviously in working dogs, aggression is a desirable trait. Prey aggression is very desirable. So, you know, I think you should get in the suit because it will really enhance your, you know, maybe you will see it coming next time if you've been in the suit more. Yeah. Well, and it just allows me to do more with more dogs. Yeah. 
And that's I must it. say, I've never worn any protective equipment. I'd say I did a lot. I've done a lot of work with aggressive dogs. Um, you know, I think a lot of time people see me online. They see me making silly videos. You know, I've got Chihuahua now, which makes the whole thing worse. I'm from Essex. I'm a woman. You know, it's a whole thing. But I actually started in working dogs and then gravitated more towards pet dogs, whereas most people start in pet dogs and then get more experience. But I went straight in with the working. And then as time's gone on, I've gone into the pet dog training. But I've worked with so many aggressive dogs. That's why it's quite nice to have a chihuahua. And, um, you know, from a puppy, it's quite relaxed for me. This, this chihuahua is like the opposite to my other personal dogs because all my other dogs are Dutch Shepherds. You know, they're all protection dogs. Maniacs. Maniacs, yeah, obviously. Controlled maniacs, but they are maniacs. You know, we do yes. bite work several times a week. So I think, um, I think, yeah, I think working with aggression, I think it is important to do that work inside. I think it is important. I think a lot the of dog trainers, I, I see they, um, in England, don't know what it's like in the US, but in England, people are very quick to say, the dog's aggressive, you need to put the dog on medication. Yep. Um, even for reactivity, you know, dogs that aren't actually going to bite, they're just, you know, making a big show. People are very quick to put the dog on medication here or even euthanize the dog um, because they simply don't have the experience or the knowledge to work with the dog, to know how know. to fix it. Touching a little bit on what you said earlier about how, you know, they're leading with their emotion, they're probably scared. They're probably scared when they meet an aggressive dog because until you've gone in one side and come out the other with an aggressive dog, it can be quite frightening. Traumatizing and trauma. Do you know what trauma and un unresolved trauma is huge? Yeah. I mean, not just they might not be scared of the dog, but they might be deeper trauma that you know is unresolved from a dog attack that happened mm -hmm. from you know something else or something that is traumatic that is now transmuting and manifesting in the state of of this energetic experience of the dog, right? And it's mm -hmm. um you know, and so, but it, I wanted to read this comment here really quick too, because I think that they're talking about the dog not loving you. Mm -hmm. Well, don't know about that. My dog care for me, literally. They check on me, they groom me, and they check on me on the walks. Yeah, they love you in, in the dog way of love, not the human way of love. That's what I mean. I don't okay. mean um, the dog doesn't like you. Obviously, your dog likes you. Your dog is affectionate towards you, but they don't, it's not the same as a human, as two humans. You're very that's what well. I mean by it. Yeah. Well, and that's it. It's like, I get it because it's natural for us to overlay our perceptions because that makes things easy, easier for us to digest. Yeah. Right? And so if we love something and it's natural for us for, to, to, to reflect, right? Yeah. And so if we love something and we think that that love is coming right back to us from that, right? And, mm -hmm. and so in us as, as professionals, when people pay us money, Mm -hmm. right and they say what do you think about this we we owe it to them to tell them the truth yeah we don't owe that to them to be like oh he loves you just like you love them bye you know it's like no yeah. we have to obviously because that's not going to fix the problem yeah right there is a problem here there's something this relationship has gone off into the ditch in some manner yeah they've hired a professional yeah. And so that's what we we owe that. And in fact, it's our obligation to tell them the truth. And sometimes the truth is brutal. Yeah. Right? Sometimes that's brutal. Part of why I made my lesson so targeted, though, because then you don't have to worry if the dog loves you because you're just making it walk next to you. So regardless of whether you think the dog loves you or you love the dog or what your emotions are, ultimately you, your dog's going to stop pulling on lead and you are going to have a better bond and a better connection because you're going to be going on a walk together rather than the dog dragging you down the street. So if that enhances somebody's feeling of love to their dog, that's fine by me just because I don't think a dog loves us the same way. I'm not, I, I don't think it's, I don't really think it's a bad thing if somebody thinks that as long as they don't, love them to death like your patreon subscriber said earlier well and it's also just about what i was saying earlier to force your own perceptions upon another living creature is a toxic behavioral trait right and mm -hmm. and when in and, and in a way that is where we refuse to see the truth and we we mislabel yeah. you know behaviors we mislabel all that stuff and um 
uh, they want your Gail's contact in the comments, please. You got it. I'll put up all of the information for her. We as dog trainers have to help people get past their false belief about dogs. And um, Kelly Engel, a, a friend of mine here, she was like, it's like the people's lens. She wants to change the lens, right, of how people look at dogs, how they how they perceive of them. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's a pretty big job, man. That's a pretty big job. It is a big job. It is a big job. But I think some of the problem in dog training is, is kind of having this discussion because if you just strip everything back and you say, okay, what does your dog do and what does your dog not do, and then you make those things happen, doesn't that repair the balance between the human and the dog anyway? Yeah. Well, basics. A lot of times, too, what I tell is like, look, let's work on the, the obedience work. Yeah. And any problem behavior, we're going to work on it. And I tell them week number seven, right? If yeah. we have a 10 week program, like we're going to have like this open week where we can really focus on any problem behavior. And do you know what happens at week seven, Gail? They have none. Yeah. Isn't that funny how exactly you just say it right away? Yeah. And I'll ask them. I'll be like, because I'll write it down. I'll be like, okay, here we are, week seven, because I'll make a note everybody's behavior yeah. that they mentioned on week number one. And I'll be like, okay, how is boomer separation anxiety? And a lot of times they're like, they're like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like we haven't dealt with that for a lot. And I'm like, okay, cool. How's the pulling on the leash? <laughs> how's yeah. the potty in the house? How's the jumping up on people? How's, and yeah. every single one has been resolved. Because yeah. we've filled in the gaps, we've taken yeah. back and we've built the proper foundation of learning. And yeah. now that that foundation has been built, now we can revisit. And then we realize that during the building of that foundation is as flushed out all the problem behavior because the communication. And so don't you find that that change their, changes their perception of their dog and their relationship with their dog, even without you having to directly address, well, your dog doesn't love you. You don't have to say that because... The, the, the boundaries and, and the connection between the dog and the human become clear through training, I think. Yeah, it calms them down, man. Yeah. You know, at first they're like luring all this, all chick, 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 like as Bart says, chicky, chicky, chong or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm watching them and I'm just like, okay, wow, this is interesting. And I ha I'm like, man, that takes a lot of, a lot of energy to manage that dog every single day, man. Like, wouldn't it be that, cool if you could just hang, you know? That's just, another like, one that people struggle with, the verbal praise. When I say, oh, I posted about it the other day, and I said, obviously, your dog can't understand what you're saying. So it's not verbal praise. It's most likely just that normally after you say good boy, sooner or later they get food. So they start to be, they start to anticipate that something that they actually value is going to come. So they show excitement at the verbal praise because of that, because of the actual reinforcer. The verbal praise isn't the reinforcer, but people like to believe that when they say, you're my Superman, you're the best dog ever, I love you so much, that the dog understands what they're saying because they're wagging their tail. And people get very offended when I say that. Because I've seen all my online lessons, there's no verbal praise at all. There's a lot of food, toys, um, but no no verbal praise. I think it's very distracting for the handler and for the dog. Because, again, it's like the handler trying to speak English or Spanish or French, whatever language they speak, to the dog who doesn't speak. The dog speaks in very subtle body language. You know, it speaks within centimetre movements. It doesn't need all that... Ah! When you're training i've had to put a piece of tape i had to put a piece of tape on my client's mouth once because she and i tell them silence is golden duct tape is silver for that reason too how did they take that Dude, they laughed they liked that no because it, i kept on chatting with her and it just needed it wasn't like i taped her mouth i took a piece of tape like i just gave it i didn't put it like, like just to remind her right <laughs> look at you we do things a little different here in america Sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, or like people grabbing the leash, like they just have bad hand. Like I have a where I want them to handle that leash with one hand, and and like I don't want them to be managing this dog. I want the dog to exist with them. I want them to have a, a good relationship, but I want them to exist in the world, and I want their dog not to be a robot. I want their dog to be in the world too, and just know what's up. Mm. You know. And that's that's basically it, you know. That and that's, robot. That's what everybody worries about with obedience: the dog being a robot. Yeah, 
And that's what I hear all the time. I don't want to break that dog's spirit. I don't want my dog to be a robot. I don't want to. And it's like, dude, you're not. In fact, you are opening up the lines of communication. You are showing this dog that they belong, that they have value, that you appreciate them and and giving them an outlet of uh, uh, where they can express themselves to the fullest degree right and, as a and dog as a dog yeah. yeah i i didn't realize that um people thought and until i started doing instagram seriously i didn't realize that people thought walking a dog walking next to you in heel was cruel and i've since found out that people think you're you're making the dog do it you're forcing the dog to walk there but when I hear that, I think these people haven't walked next to a dog that likes going for a walk with you. It's so calm and connected. To be barely holding the leash and walking with the dog is so, it's meditative. So I, I always read that and I think, laugh when I see the robot thing. I think you need that lived experience to understand that there's nothing robotic about it. It's so organic. Having yeah. a connection with the dog and then responding to your commands and understanding that interspecies communication there's nothing robotic about it's so organic well and i hand people my dog's leash and i say tell my dog to heal right and my little dog and do you know what my little dog does he like corrects the per like he'll he'll the dog the person will be standing there and then my little dog will be like oh man he'll just like scooch right into him you know and then the person will like take a couple steps forward my dog will go right into a heel right with him and yeah. the person's like looking at the dog like, oh, whoops, sorry. But I'm like, no, he's he's doing what he's supposed to do, man. Just walk. And and then I'm talking to him. I was like, how does this feel? Yeah. I was like, no, I was like, oh, no yeah, take, like, take a 90 degree turn. I was like, don't worry. You're not. He's going to get out of the way. Don't worry about managing or pushing the dog out of the way. Just turn. Mm-hmm. I was like, just walk like you're not even holding a dog. OK. And I want to know, how does this feel? We got a question that just came up in the, in the comments here. Uh, but have you ever done that? Have you ever let somebody handle a trained dog? I got protection dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's a little yeah, different. I mean, like mine, me. right? And that's and and because they can make a wrong move, dude, and send well, them. Well, I do. I, obviously, yeah. I use my dogs for when I was doing one-to-one training. I always use my dog. I use whatever dog I had with me as a demo dog. If I had a dog for residential, I'd bring that dog out because obviously that's part of their training. So I'm not fussy like that, but I wouldn't let people hold the dog one of my lead of one of my protection dogs now because i i also don't take somebody else's lead rarely sometimes if i'm teaching something very very small within centimeters in like a technical obedience then i might say let me just show you what your dog can do in the obedience you know in the way you move but in pet training i never take the lead because i think it's very much about them learning how to do it not about I can show them I can do it, but what good is that? And that yeah. that's part of what drove me the online lessons. I think yeah, I can keep training dogs in person because I can do it all day. But people need to learn how to do it themselves. They need to go through the ugly part of it. They need to get it wrong, and they need to do it themselves. That's awesome. That's, that's something that I, you know, and that's it because it's like us as professionals, we want to show them. Look, this mm-hmm. is possible. Watch how quickly your dog does it with me. Yeah. Right. But a lot of times they're like, that could be a point of contention because they're like, well, of course they do it with you, yeah. but it's not me. And it's like, no, like we have to force it. Like, that's good. Lu- that's good. Get Lucy. <laughs> that's good. Gail. We're doing it like, now. Yeah, totally. But that's, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why it's good to do these online lessons, man. Like, um, I, 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 that just made me like, that's a good point. Yeah, that, that just got. Me. I did, I I did absolutely years of residential training. At one point, I would only do residential training, so I very much worked with dogs, and I never had problems handing the dogs over or doing the handover or anything like that. But I thought, I'm sure that I can teach owners to do. You know, I if I have a reactive dog, for example, it's reactive on lead, I will exclusively use lead walking to solve the dog's reactivity. Like you said about having the program, I don't actually specifically target, I don't do reactivity training, I do lead training, and that solves the reactivity. So I thought, why not teach people how to do it themselves from their phone? No kidding. Hold on, I mean, this guy's gonna come over here. I'm gonna tell him not to come over here for a second. (laughs) My neighbors text me or call me, and every time he calls me, he's like right before he comes over. I'm live streaming. Did you say we have a question? Oh, yes. Let's do that while I'm texting. <laughs> Let me not hold this up here. 
Question for both of you. What would you say has been your biggest challenge so far in dog training, sport, working, or pet training? We, I'll let you take this one. That's a small question there. <laughs> I'd say, I, ha I mean, it changes as your career develops, obviously. I'd say originally the challenge for me was that I loved dogs, and I've, I've always felt a natural way with dogs. As soon as I got a dog... You know, people used to say to me, oh, you're so, you're so lucky, your dog's so good. But I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just living with the dog. And, you know, I knew a little bit about training here and there, but nothing like what I know now. And the challenge for me in the beginning was making myself love people as much as I loved dogs. Because obviously it's all well and good. I'm a dog person. I prefer dogs. But mm -hmm. the dogs are attached to people. So you have to love people. You have to love – like I get messages every day – people sending me their videos because, you know, it's hard when you've got a dog, if you haven't got friends with dogs or your family not that interested, like who cares if your dog walks, you know, five miles without pulling? No one cares. I care. And for me in the beginning, I was very much, I love dogs. I want to be with dogs. I want to do board and train. I just want to work with dogs. That's not realistic. You, ha I had to teach myself how to find joy in people as well, the people that are attached to the dogs and not just the dogs. One of the questions I used to ask everybody on this live stream was like, what do you, what do you tell people who tell you I got into dog training because I hate people? What do you I tell just, people that what that say that? I just don't know. I don't know how you can expect to have a career because the dog can't pay your fee for a start. So you better find a way to like people because otherwise how are you going to get paid for a start? That's what I would say to that professional. Okay. Um, and also I just think, how can you how can you hate people and love dogs when when people and dogs are so intertwined and have been for thousands and thousands of years they're, they're such a natural companion to us how can you not reflect that into the people that are attached to them I, I well, it's, a, it's a red flag for me too it's like i get yeah. it like there's some people that but just like I was saying about how a toxic characteristic, <laughs> like and this is uh, from somebody that has done work on myself. Like it, it is like when you start to look at your own behavior and how you perceive the world, sometimes we can be like, you know what, maybe that that could use a little bit of a, a of a refresher, a glance back or or evaluation. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's like there's some people that are just not good with people um but you can learn that too right? yeah and so there's yeah and there's kennel i mean there's ways that you can have like separation but there's that there's no way like the most of this is working with the people we are working with interspecies communication we are yeah. certain species and we're working with trying to communicate with this species to teach them how to communicate with another right and so yeah. I, I would I say think if you if you can't take an intrinsic pleasure in someone celebrating their win about their dog with you dog training isn't the job for you it's not the job for you maybe you could be a kennel hand or something i don't know where you don't have to talk to anyone but dog training is about dog and dog and human both it's not all just about dogs yep i think the same thing what what would you say has been the biggest challenge so far in, in your dog training yeah is how how to effectively communicate aspects of philosophy to people in a way that they really really get it yeah right and that's where we and that's one of the reasons what motivated me to have these conversations and start live streaming them um it's just so people can see how we we interact as professionals but also i wanted to learn myself how to how to put things differently how to um you know, just how to reframe, rephrase, re-approach. Um, everybody's different, man. And yeah. uh, we have the the person and the dog and the environment. Those are the three variables that we're coming into a situation. Those are always changing. And we're trying to get an idea of the pattern that we're, is in front of us so we can make suggestions that uh, would, would help alleviate and help this, this, um, this relationship improve and uh and heal or whatever it is but um that's it is is how how to present information in a way that people really really get it in a way that 
they take action and apply what, what the fundamentals that I'm teaching them to their life. And if it's over their head, if they don't get it, then they're not going to apply it because they don't get it. Yeah. All right. And Albert Einstein says that if you can't explain something simply, you just don't know it well enough. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, my that's goal. why, I've, honestly, my lessons are so easy. Even if there is a word like reinforcement, I explain what that means. I, I literally have a glossary in there. So I think people are sometimes a bit, they're a bit, um, you know, on the back foot with dog trainers because dog trainers talk in all this fancy language and, you know, do a bit gatekeeping and make it complicated. But I think, yeah, it's got to be easy. It's got to be easy. They're just normal people. They don't want to be dog trainers. They just want to walk their dog and call it and they want it to come. Yeah. That's what most people want. So why make it difficult? But you know that question, something I found, I just re remembered, something I found the, the biggest challenge in sport working dogs was protection. It was protection. And, you know, I traveled all over Europe trying to work my dog in protection. And it wasn't until I met my, I was going to give up on bite work, which is crazy now because I have, I have uh, six duchies now. We have protection dogs, you know, we do protection all the time. But I was about to give up on protection because I was saying to people, well, why? Why is this happening? Why does the dog do this? Why is the dog doing this? And no one could explain what they were doing because, as I now know, protection is just people just put a suit on and take bites and, you know. Yeah, that right. was a massive hurdle for me. And I, I've been saying to my husband, you know, you need to explain to people like me who wanted to get into sport and working dogs and just didn't understand. And to, as a woman, it's quite difficult to go to a male dominated club and say, hello, I don't, I don't know anything. Help me. You know, nobody takes you seriously. Nobody wants to actually explain anything to you. So that was a massive, massive hurdle for me. Massive hurdle. But it's not now. But it seems crazy to say that now. Um, but I did learn all about that from my husband, who's also going online now. He's also going to do online lessons. Cool. I'd be interested in chatting with him on a live stream yeah. as well if yeah, he's interested he, in chatting with me. On, on, our, on our protection dogs, we get requests from, you know, Canada, US. You know, we can't seriously go in there and doing schools and doing seminars. But obviously online, you can access anyone, can't you? Absolutely. You know, just like so, we are right now. You know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I've been working at getting stuff. you live for a while, <laughs> but no, I've been I'm persistent. Terrible. I'm terrible. I can't get organized. It's crazy for someone that works from their phone and from the internet. Well, it's certain, th but do you know what? We say persistent and guess what? It happens, man. Yeah. And, and it's just uh, all in due time, but we keep our eye on the big prize, which is making it happen. And yeah. same thing with my clients. Like I'm like, eye on the big prize, man. Like visualize yourself on the beach you know walking around with your dog relax that's what i say to people as well that's crazy yeah i always say it to people visualize your dream walk and you'll yeah. get that Man, well and that's what like it. on the last day of the class like that's what i notice is that i look around my class and i kind of like i really enjoy just watching the people come out of their car into the class from the first day yeah the second week third week usually the third week i'm meeting them out in the car or something you know just be like hey try this like like making yeah. a suggestion or just like let's do this again or I'll, or I'll tell people they'll come walking through the door i'm like why don't you try that again <laughs> you know but that's what we're there to do is like mm -hmm. that's why you're hiring me this is what and and i just saw this uh you know we we could do this better let's 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 take the opportunity right now and let's do this better and um and then on the last day gail like i just look at them and i just kind of get this like sense of, of pride yeah just because they're they're calm you know yeah. and they're chatting it up with with the people that they have just been working with this class for two months with and and now they're making plans to maybe go on a hike afterwards with their dogs or something like that. And and their dog's just kicking it right there with them. Right. Yeah. And and that's what it's all about, man. It's just like yeah. it's just kind of alleviating that the cloud of confusion and bringing about clarity to the relationship that that you can literally see manifest itself in 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 calmness. Yeah. And presence like they're they're more present. Yeah. They're not they're not always like looking at that dog like always. And that's what I tell is like dude, you have a lot of energetic residue in your brain right now, man, trying to manage this dog and manage that dog trying to do this. And like you can't really be 100 percent present. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now we have all these chunks already busy doing other stuff. And 
And when we start to look at multitasking and try to do that, we find out that it's not very effective. And when we can quiet all that stuff down and really, really be present, it's a magical thing, man. You, you, you see people who, for who they are and, and you start to see the people that they're meant to be. And, and not only that, but they got this dog to not be a stress event. Yeah. Like they, they got this dog to enhance their Enjoy life. Them. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I, a lot of times I tell them, I was like, why did you get the dog? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, didn't you get him to enjoy it? Like, this doesn't yeah. look like, this doesn't look like a good relationship. It doesn't look like uh, you guys are enjoying yourself. And sometimes the lady's like, or mom's like, I hate him or, or whatever. And whatever. But that's what I mean, people like, need, isn't it? To reconnect to their ideal of a dog. Because the why. Start with the why, the man. Dog, that is it's definitely achievable with the right, right training. Um, yeah. You know, obviously there can be some management and some limits if you have a very aggressive dog or something like that and you were hoping for, you know, a soft little fluffy cuddly thing that could play with everyone. But I find a lot of people can adjust their dream because they love the dog. But again, I don't think it's bad that people love their dogs. I think it's fantastic. Um because, you know, a lot of people wouldn't put up with what they put up with from dogs if they didn't feel that strongly about them. Well, a lot of people have dedicated their lives to working with dogs because they got a difficult dog. Yeah, 100%. And, just like, and then, then, you know, I see that probably about 70%, 60%. So good. Like, go look at the, the interviews I've done and I've talked to people. And just like Gail was saying about, like, I almost gave up. Yeah. Like these people are like, dude, I've been to all these trainers, these positive trainers or whatever they were trying to train my dog without really addressing the root of the problem first. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they, you know, a lot of times what we were saying earlier about the snake oil salesman, sometimes their, their problem is still there or sometimes it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then they're like, look, man, I'm hiring these professionals. I'm doing this. And, and sometimes they'll find an outlier trainer that's old school or whatever. And they'll, you know, or sometimes they just kind of learn it on themselves by watching content like this. Mm -hmm. and realizing that it is possible and that they get the permission or they to to try this stuff on their own mm -hmm. and um and they see results and they're like oh my gosh i can live with this dog i can do this uh, you know i think that's what a lot of um dog professionals are threatened by the idea of people doing it themselves because obviously they don't want to be out of the job but i i don't know about you but i don't feel threatened by that at all i, I think that's Fantastic. Like you said about There's plenty of dogs, yeah. reframing our projection onto dogs, reframing how dogs are uh, and how society is with dogs to contribute to that. You know, that's a gift that you can give to people. I don't feel that it's threatening for people to DIY their dog no. with the right training, the right education, the right knowledge, the right online lessons, you know, I, don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing because why shouldn't they do it themselves with somebody helping them, you know? And when I've got the online lessons, obviously, and they're pre recorded, so people watch the lesson at the right, and they can watch it a million. Someone messaged me the other day, I've watched it a million times because I keep forgetting it, and I'm so glad I have to get my phone out on the walk and all that. That's fine, but I'm there as well after, and it's often like little tweaks, and that's where our experience and our knowledge comes in. That somebody says, oh, you know, someone said to me the other day, their dog wasn't walking. They're not even online shooting. They just asked me about it. Their dog's standing still. And I said, oh, what, what do you have on the dog? And they said, like, a no pull harness. And I said, oh, okay, so the harness is hurting your dog. That's why it doesn't want to walk. That's right, it's trying to go home. They switch it up. It's all fine. You know, so I think, I think if you've got a lot of experience and you know dogs well and you know owners well you know that you're never going to run out of work so it's not frightening for people to want to do it themselves and want to be proactive we have in england now i don't know what you have there but we have people dog owners who are making their own communities and doing their own pack walks Beautiful. So they all have rules for the pack walks so they don't say hello they don't go off lead you know they're all under control and they're getting together in their spare time for free they're just doing it themselves and they're going on these pack walks together. And I can imagine that's probably quite frightening for quite a lot of dog trainers who are more sort of ego-based. If you're truly in it genuinely for the betterment of dogs and the betterment of dogs and their relationship, I think I think it's all really positive. I think it's great. I think the internet is really helping facilitate that and improve things everywhere in every country. 
Yeah, and speaking of which, proper explanation helps for us that English is not the first language in any training tips and courses, and that's why I stick with Gail. I have three courses from her as I understand what I need to do. So what, 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 what is the, um, you can share it well here. I'm going to, what is your website? It's you. on my Instagram. I can send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Send it to me and then I'll go there yeah, and then so. um, we'll share it on in the comments here. But um, repetition is the mother of learning. That's what I tell people. Right. And, and you know what? We all learn differently at different paces. And if you have something and I've done this myself when I have been certified with dog training um, is that I went and watched it over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I remember Tony and Shetta, who, um, who was one of my mentors at uh, learning KMODT, Keeler Method of Dog Training. I remember one time, like I submitted a video for one of these lessons and he was like, everybody failed. <laughs> and I'm just like, what about me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he's yeah. like, e everybody. <laughs> and so then I go back to the video and watch the yeah. video and I picked up exactly why I failed. Right. And so yeah. that's, and that's, and, and I am, I'm grateful for him because he made me look back at that video yeah. <laughs> I, I just, and really made me stop and introspectively look at myself. And, and uh, I recommend, we have all these video um, cameras. We have all these devices, right? These little things that have right here at the end of, um, that I, I recommend you videotaping yourself clients. Yeah right and yeah. you vi videotape your sessions but also as professionals too we have a, a wonderful tool to leverage and, and um, reach so many people and so let me paste up your so here is i put up in the comments gail's uh courses here you guys so check her out um canine.co or canine coach you or canine coach uk dot teachable dot com mm -hmm. okay and then um, how many programs do you have there now? I think four, four lessons and two ebooks. Okay, and I'm working on my books too right now. Yeah. I'm reformatting them. I have, and same thing that you're doing, Gail. So what I'm doing is I'm writing ten books. Okay. Right, and I've finished four of them, but each one of them has to do with a different aspect of the relationship with the dog so and and i'll put up links um in the comments down below but i'm reformatting them as soon as i got them reformatted i will do that but i'll, I'll let you know the titles right now of my 10 books you're breaking um, it down breaking it into chunks breaking it into chunks right and that's what i wanted to do is like kind of take this thirty thousand foot view of like what people are coming to me for and yeah. not only that but how do i put this in a way that is general yeah right? And, and, and I do have sections where I deal with problem behaviors, but I also have to remind people like, look, there's professionals out here. You do not have yeah. to do this alone, right? You, yeah. You're not alone in this. Like we, yeah. we can help you. And so then that's where um, having resources like Gail to go online or to take one of her courses um, is a valuable thing because now we know that we don't have to go it alone and, and you can play this as many times as you need to. Um, where's my notes? What I'm seeing as well is that once people can get a basic level of obedience, like not pulling on the lead, they can then go and meet up with somebody else whose dog also doesn't pull on the lead, and then they can work on their problem behaviours together. In yep. England, we have massive, massive reactivity problems. It's okay. probably the main problem of dogs because we don't have lead laws here, so... You guys have dog parks that are fenced in. Everywhere we go, dogs run over and jump all over our dogs. Everywhere. Interesting. Everywhere. So unless you hire a private field or you walk into the middle of nowhere where you still might meet someone with a dog, and it'll definitely be off lead, then your dogs get rushed. Some people's dogs get rushed every time they go out. Okay. By people saying it's okay, he's friendly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the culture here. That's the culture here. And, and the thing is, what I'm the feedback that I get from people is that they're, <laughs> you know, they're trying to solve their reactivity and they'll go, you know, a week, they make a big progress and then somebody's dog will jump all over them. 
Yeah. Uh, Heidi wants to know, I have a question here. Did you do any dog training courses or just to learn from experience? So I did do the Nipopo school. I don't know how long ago that was. I was a first graduate in England. So I think probably seven, six years ago, seven years ago. I don't know. Um, but I've worked with dog trainers all over Europe in every section of dog training that you can imagine. Um, and I've got, I've trained, probably, uh, I don't even know, probably thousands of dogs now, thousands. Um, well, I love that you started in the working world too, man. I went the wrong way. But you know how I this ended up the right working way. world? Because I had a pet dog that no pet trainers could help me with. So I went to a working sport club, which also made it worse, but in different ways. Um, and then so... I just sort of sidetracked the pet stuff and went into the working stuff. And the working stuff helped me curate the way that I train pet dogs. Same with me. Very quickly, I was training dog trainers because, you know, I didn't do any luring or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So the stuff I was doing was different. So dog trainers were sort of coming to me, oh, don't tell anyone that I came here sort of thing, you know, secret lessons. So I trained a lot of dog trainers in the beginning, but that, for me, that that I know it's all money and I'm doing it. It is my job, obviously, but for me, that was not fulfilling at all. Doing little secret sessions with dog trainers who then sold my words as their words, and you know, I much prefer. I just really get a buzz from pet dog owners. Really well, like you could tell it, man. And William says here, you know, great IG vids, Gail, always entertaining. And you do, you guys got to go follow her, man. What are you at, like 40,000, 50,000 followers on IG right now? 40,000, yeah. Good job, man. Crazy. Keep it going, though. You know, and that's what, but because people are, they like that. And I like it too. Like, I like your copy. I like just how you're authentic. And you're like, um, as I was saying earlier, it's you, babe. <laughs> like, I think of you when I hear that song because you were, you were talking about, you just had a post that rang true with me. Um, where you're just like, when people come and tell me that it's all their dog, it's, you know, th that they're the problem. And, and I have to say, it's you, babe. Like, um, and that's it's a true, great though. way to reach people through creative content and, and in oh, a way that, well, it sticks, you know, and it makes a difference and, and keep it up, man. That's where, um, and so make sure you guys are following frozen i don't think i'm frozen but bill is frozen there it goes it froze but now we're back it's elon musk internet that i have oh, here okay. sometimes sometimes it he gets a little temperamental um <laughs> Uh, the Basics of Training uh, is the very first book, is The Basics of Training, How to Bond with Your Dog and Create a Strong Foundation for Success. So that's that book number one. Title? Yes. Okay. And so that one's on Amazon, but I, I don't know. I pulled it down, so you can't get it. I'm reformatting it. I will be back up. That one's almost done. Second one, Dog Training for Fun and Games, Fun and Engaging Activities for Your Dog to Enjoy. Because I want to, I like that training through play, man. I like the 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 the, the rapport that's built up through play, right? And I don't do it. You don't, okay. Um, I so don't hate if you do it. I just, I just, um, again, in the English dog training scene, there's a lot of um, play, 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 hype, 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 cheerly, cheerly, with no results. So I do right. steer away from the play, but I do use scent work. So that's a game for me. I think that's a game for them. Yeah. Well, and I do, I do go into structured, like it's not, it's not crazy manic games. It's yeah. like structured, like this will benefit and this will be applicable. Um, and then the third book is training for obedience, how to teach your dog to listen and follow commands. Right. And then I'm starting to get into um, some special uh, sports. So I wanted to do one on agility, um, how to build confidence and coordination. So that's number four is, is training for agility. Um, without luring. Without, well, well, I mean, without luring. We don't, we get into that a little bit, like, but it's mostly, you know, just structuring, um, setting up, um, communicating the rules and different equipment that we use and how to, how to set it up and making sure that no freaking dog marks on this equipment, supervising your dogs. Don't be, you know, like, like letting you know, like once a dog marks on that, that's kind of, 
it, you know nullifies yeah. that 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 equipment right um yeah. so number four is training for agility number five is training for special skills how to teach your dogs and other fun skills that's the one i'm writing currently um and then number six is uh train health and wellness dog fit and happy okay. so we're going to be working on some um health uh, exercise diet all that stuff um, and then I wanted to do one on senior dogs, how to uh, training for senior dogs, how to help your older dog maintain their mobility and quality of life is number seven. And then number eight is training for puppies. I definitely wanted to include that as well. Yeah. Socialize and train your puppy for a happy and healthy life. Yeah. Um, and then training for the real world is number nine. And so these are kind of like catch all stuff that I'm kind of um, have a gutter that I'm just putting in topics that people always, I'm always dealing with, with my clients or whatnot. Um, how to prepare for your dog life outside the home. And then number 10, training for life, how to nurture a lifelong bond with your dog and enjoy every moment together. And are these short books? Or... About 50 pages. Okay. Yep. And so all 10 of them are going to be a manual. I'm going to bundle it all together and be like the main manual. Or if you want to just get one of one section of it as a lesson. And then I'm going to be doing, um, as soon as these books are written, then I'll be doing probably maybe a teachable or another um, a platform where I'm going to be turning them into lessons, right? And yeah. then walking through and then uh, putting together testimonials and and um, compiling, um, you know, just different different aspects and then and then moving forward with writing more books and evolving uh, any way I, I can. Vanessa says, do you both have mentors? Yes, absolutely. As, nice. If so, how important, <laughs> how important is finding a mentor for aspiring dog trainers? So do you have a mentor? No. Do my you dog. eat do you my eat dog men is my mentor? Dogs are my mentors. There you go. Dogs are your experts. I have a mentor because I think, um, you know, I think mentor is a little bit like a guru term. You know, yeah. most dog trainers would agree that going to a lot of dog trainers, watching a lot of dog trainers, and going to a lot of seminars, going to a lot of workshops, you know, try, actually physically trying out the way people train dogs on your own dog or on, on whatever dogs you have for training is the best version of learning rather than subscribing to one guru and learning all from them. So I don't, I, I like mentor. I don't like guru, right? I, I definitely have mentors, but I just think of it as like somebody that is um, just a teacher that I like Bart and Michael, um, Tony and Shetta, um, there's so many that I've learned from, you know, that it's, and not only that, but John Asaraf in the business world, I've had mentors, um, jo, uh, Joe Dispenza, who's a mentor that is, is a, teaches meditation. Um, and then I have mentors in the glass field, right? Joe Dispenza or Joe Peters, Scott Deppy. Like there's so many people that I learn from and, I just look at the people that have achieved something that I want. And so how I found these people is I saw their dogs and I was like, dude, this dog's amazing. Who trained this dog? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's how I found people. I'm like, I got to learn from this person yeah. because that dog just did something like, yeah, where did they, are they mentors? Would and you that, say? That, that would be the mentor. So definitely, I actually looked it up. Definition of a mentor is an experienced yeah, or trusted awesome. advisor. Right. Okay. And so, but that's where, like, we got to be careful of the mentors mm. becoming the guru, right? I don't want to be your guru. I don't want to be anybody's guru. I don't want to have a guru. I want to have somebody that's trusted advisor. And just like a good teacher needs to become progressively unnecessary, right? Otherwise, you are a guru, right? You are yeah. part of that, right? And so yeah. we are empowering people with the knowledge. Yeah. Um, and so that they may become changed and become better and, and fix any problem that they're hiring and paying us for. Um, yeah, so I, I think, yeah, by that definition, I've definitely had people advise me along the way, Bart and Michael, obviously, in the beginning. Um, and I think I'm in, in a little bit of a gifted position because my husband is a, is a decoy and he is excellent. So if I ever want to bounce a dog idea off someone, I bounce it off him 
and we go back and forth. So, you know, you said earlier about how everyone should video themselves. We do. We video everything we do. And then when we finish training at the end of the day, we sit down together, we go over the videos and we have conversations. So I guess we, we're advising each other in that way. But I think I'm in a bit of a gifted position. Most people's partners aren't on their level of dog training, so they can't have that conversation. You know, a lot of people's partners don't even like dogs. They're dog trainers. So I think I have <laughs> my outlet there for dog training theory. I have that outlet. If I ever want to talk dog training theory and I don't have to ever explain anything to him because he already knows everything that I know because we share our knowledge. So, yeah, I, obviously I've had a lot of people along the way that I've learned from, but I would say it's like a little bit here, a little bit there. I know everyone likes to say this, um, you know, like always learning culture, and I'm not disagreeing with that at all, but I learn much more now from dogs not people that train dogs from actual dogs from being with dogs and spending time with dogs I think people think because I'm online I live with seven dogs and I have an extra dog here for boarding right now I'm a, I'm literally immersed in dogs I'm immersed in them all day every day and they're very complicated difficult dogs they're not I don't know what people would think Mallies and Dutchies are like but mine aren't like that mine are very complicated they're amazing they're fantastic they're difficult to train because they're interesting not because they're naughty for anyone watching this that doesn't they're know high precision high, high precision dogs. dogs yeah yeah they're not naughty that they're, they're just super interesting they challenge me all the time so i i am always learning but more from dogs than people i would say now at this stage you've reached that level yeah, I, I can't see what I would want to go, especially, like I say, because I have the the whole um, working and protection sports side from my husband as well. I can't see what I would or would want to sort of be mentored in now. But I can see how I definitely want to spend time with a different sort of dog or a different personality of dog. Do you have anybody that you want to go to a seminar or anybody that's on the that's in the industry right now that you, you're kind of leaning towards you want to maybe learn from? Not right now. Okay. Not right now. I'm really, I'm really focused at the moment at just connecting with pet owners. I've got to be honest. That's what I've really, I'm really thriving up at the moment. Like That's the other needed. day, she, a lady, she sent me a video of her walking with a coffee cup in her hands and her dog like looped over her wrist. And Love she it. said that it was her goal to walk from A to B with the coffee cup and she'd smashed it. And I was just like, that made me happy all day. And even now talking about it, you can see, I'm so happy about it. So for me, I think when, because I started in working, I got a bit of pushback from dog trainers that were like, oh, you're going to be just a pet dog trainer. You know, but it's what you want to give to the world. It's what gift you want to give. And I want to make people happy. I want to make normal dogs happy. So I do all the other fancy stuff in my spare time and nobody sees it. But I just do that for my own. That's my hobby. Like you said, the glass is your hobby. My hobby is the intricate training with the dogs. There's one of my guys. <laughs> I got to make you a pink one. I got to go buy some pink glass. I, I didn't get any pink glass on this order. So, so um, uh, let's see here. We have another question here. Seriously thinking about taking fosters, particularly older ones. Good for you. Any advice? I am now work at home. I have four dogs, Deerhound and Saluki. Woo! Appreciate your input today. So you got d bigger dogs. So, and, uh, um, you know, if that's an older dog, then, I mean, you would just look at the rescue or the foster if they provide um, health assistance for these older dogs. I, I work with um, a rescue here in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that's called Old Dog Haven. And uh, they're really cool because they provide all the medical attention for all of their older dogs. And so you foster the dogs and anything that goes wrong with that dog. And as they get older, that's when we're going to be having some of the vet issues and stuff that, that, that come up uh, later on in life. Um, and so, you know, just structuring your house and knowing that you're a foster, you're not the dog's owner. Right. Yeah. And so we have to be that middleman that allows this dog to have a successful life with their owner and and that's not you right now unless you you choose to own the dog then that's a different story but right now we are somebody that's kind of a middleman that wants to teach this dog beneficial behaviors and even older dogs ways that they're going to be a successful adoption 
story okay so that's one thing is like don't be letting the dog on the couch i'll be doing all this crazy stuff it's not your dog we're teaching the dog manners we're teaching the dog structure that's the importance and a lot of times i think that's what's missing out of the foster relationship what do you think gail i think she needs to take her own four dogs into account as well do they like being around strange dogs because i think when you're a dog trainer you do a lot of residential training your dogs sort of are like another dog they don't care. They get so used to dogs in and out, in and out. They're so disinterested. I had a lot of people, when I got the Chihuahua, they said, oh, well, what are your big dogs going to do? What are they going to think? And I, nothing. They don't, it's just a dog to them. They've seen so many dogs in and out of their home, they couldn't care less. So I think she needs to prepare her dogs for that eventuality and maybe have a friend bring their dog in and see what happens because she's going to be alone with the foster when that happens. So And, and you know, it doesn't mean she can't train it, train for it especially using place, for example. Do you really need to teach the dog's place if they don't know that already? Um, but I think see how her dogs respond to a strange dog coming in and entering effectively their kennel and their pack, you know, coming in. I think she needs to check that first before she commits to anything. Good, That's good what point. I Good point. And you say place like these are some of these commands like and people scoff at it. But I think that it's essential for some of my pet clients, man. This is a duration command. It's like a stay, but it also gives a dog. So we I use a cot. Um, You can use like a little I I like to put the dog up a little bit in elevation because when they have to jump down from that, that is my perfect opportunity for them to to get wrecked and be like, no, knock it off back up like and so i do love place um what are what are some essentials that as a pet dog trainer that um for me it's it's place come sit down um stay leave it no i mean that's basically it like i think come in England, obviously, like I say, I'm speaking from an English perspective because we don't have leash laws. Come is the number one. And okay. then second, heal, third place. Okay. So you do heal. Here in America, heal is, is kind of heal. like a forgotten yeah, so, thing. So I've learned from having them. Um, I've got something like 40% of my followers are from America. And they said to me, oh, you keep saying off leash. We can't go off leash. And I, I, did, I didn't realize that most of America is leash laws. And they are talking about it here in England now. They are proposing it because we've had a lot of stuff in the news recently. Yeah. Um, dog attacks and this and that. I saw you post about one of them, the dog walker that got attacked. That tragedy. So, so crazy. People got to remember yeah. these are animals, man. Yeah. They're opportunistic predators, right? Yeah. And I have, I've actually reached out to a, a couple dog attack of victims that I want to talk to on a live stream. Mm. Okay. One of them is, um, I mean, I want to talk to people. That's what I do. And I want to just talk to them about, you know, and, and, and one of them is just not ready for it. She got her lip bit all off. And so half of her mouth right now is grafted shut with yeah. her skin. And so it can all reheal. And then they're going to go in and reconstruct her mouth. Yeah. And she was kissing a pit bull. Because she thought that she knew this dog, and she, and I, and I, I talked to her, and I said, um, I just, I could tell that she's got a lot of trauma, a lot of. Um, she just was like, I thought I, I thought I knew dogs, and now I hate them, you know. And I was just like, Ooh, like I get that, but I'm here, and and I just want to talk to you and and let you know that you know there's people out here thinking about you and. I mean, these dog attacks can, they're very traumatic, man. And I've seen some pretty traumatic things. I've worked with a lot of court cases here, uh, mm-hmm. been referred to by the state um, with dogs. And and one in particular who um, bit the kid, bit the lip of the kid. A lot of this is face and, face and neck bites. Um, and the dog's not a bad dog, you know. And I went up to the, the house and I said to the kid, I said, I, I want you to pretend like I'm the doggy. And I want you to do exactly what you did to the doggy when you got bit. And the dog, and then the kid was like, okay. And he's like, I'm a monster. Ah. Mm. And came but where out. were the parents? That that's right the there. That well, is the golden. I will never, ever, ever, ever blame a child no matter what they do, because children are not responsible for their actions. Their guardians are responsible for their actions. 
I okay. feel like a lot of the stuff on the internet is, is blaming. I saw someone the other day, a reel that had gone viral, um, of a woman saying that a child was demonic for approaching a dog. And it was a joke of them hitting the child away. Like, mm. claiming they're advocating for the dog. What about the child? I find that that's a very touchy subject for me as a mother. I, I can never blame a child for their actions. Their parents, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Not Great point. Great point, man. You know, and that's exactly what I said is like, look, I'm signing off on this dog. I'm going to write this letter for the state, but you need to realize that you are the one that needs to be, you know, the supervising this dog. And luckily the dog's like 12 years old now. She just actually came out and stayed with me. But, but you, great point, man. Where are the parents? And a lot of times the parents think that the dog is a nanny or some crap like that. And I'm just like, dude, no, that's a predator. That's an apex predator that you're leaving your little little kid in front of. Like these are animals, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, like they're they're gonna respond according to, um, you know, w their their own desire. And and sometimes if they're put into a position where the fear overtakes, you know, the comfort, then that fight or flight. Might well, happen. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they just are using their teeth to say go away because they've tried all their other body language methods and it hasn't worked. I even saw this little puppy that I have. I don't let people stroke him because he's small. And I obviously I see that small dogs get very defensive as they get older because people won't stop reaching out to them. But occasionally I do let people stroke because he needs to be proofed for being stroked. Mm -hmm. And I saw he doesn't like it, which is fine because I don't like it either. Most dogs don't really like it. Again, people don't want to hear that. But I saw him turn his face and she didn't stop stroking. So he licked her and he was doing his little kiss to dismiss, like lick, lick, go away from me. And I thought that's that's gonna that's the last stroke now because I know, because I know dogs, if I let that continue, what is he gonna have to do to make people stop stroking him? He's gonna start growling, he's gonna start barking, he's gonna start biting because he's a dog. He can't say, I've had enough of that now, thank you. I and like I the kiss for dismiss. Dogs. They don't like dogs anymore. Like you said, that woman doesn't like dogs anymore because she's seen aggression. But obviously I started in aggression with dogs. So I feel like they've always been real with me in that respect because I started working dogs. So I don't feel like that's ever been like a hidden factor for me. I know that dogs, some dogs can be like that and I don't care. I love them anyway. I still think they're amazing. It's got to be a relief when somebody does have a reactive dog and you come in the picture and you're like, oh. And they're just like, okay, cool. We can work with this, yeah. right? You know, and it's just like, yeah, we can, man. This is a dog being a dog. They're just being a little bit boisterous right now. They got gusto, you know, yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, yes, they do, right? And I'm just like, yeah. yeah, we can do this. And that, a lot of times that by itself is what that client needs is like just that, man, we can do this. Like we can, like, and that's where it's like, I am kind of that compass, that that check-in, that, um, you know, that, 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 um that i don't know that confidence reassuring supply but also i'm there to kind of be a hard ass too like and hold you accountable and and i found out that people like that too yeah. <laughs> like, you know like, you know it's hard doing that all over the internet in messages you have to then you're now saying you're going to move more into the online space you now have to learn how to apply all those skills that you've learned with people face to face and somehow transmit it over the internet that's a whole I'm new. learning. Yeah. I'm learning. And do you know what I do best with is dog business owners. Okay. Like people that are actually like that's a lot, that's the best them. So if you guys own a dog business, like let me know. I do a hundred bucks an hour, it's pretty easy. And we just zoom and chat it up. But it's something that um and, and I'll be making this this course too once these books are finished for my 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 clients, but uh business owners too, that's another aspect that I want to help professionals. Right. And um, I, I've, you want to I've heard the professional quality. That's right. And prove integrity of, of my colleagues and help them and, and have them help me as well. Okay. Um, any way that I can improve. And and there's a book called uh, One Small Step. Um, and it's about the Kaizen way. Um, I'll put a link for it. And it's Amazon. And basically what it is, is Kaizen means improvement in Japanese. And it's one of the like Sony, Yamaha, um toyota these are all kaizen companies and and what it is is it's it's a philosophy the kaizen philosophy and let me see um 
is basically one of, of constant improvement, right? Where we're always making small incremental changes to improve ourselves, to improve the way that we do things and to improve the way that we communicate with these animals as well. And, um, and that's why I do these live streams. I put up a, a link to the book. One small step can change your life the Kaizen way. And let me see here. Uh, the philosophy is simple. Great change is made through small steps and the science is irrefutable. Small steps circumnavigate the brain's built-in resistance to new behavior. Do you remember what I was saying about beliefs and new behavior, right? There's a built-in resistance, right? Because it keeps us safe. It keeps us in our comfort zone if we don't have to constantly adjust our behavior. No matter what the goal, losing weight, quitting smoking, writing a novel, starting an exercise program, training your dog, or meeting the love of your life, the powerful technique of Kaizen is a way to achieve it. Um, it shows you how, it, I mean, it's a great book. So I put it up in there. Um, and one of my favorite sayings is the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that's Lao Tzu in the Tao Te Ching. And it's a great philosophy book, but it's, it just illustrates that point of like, look, man, we have to have small victories, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to look, and even though we do have a big task in front of us, that having that constant and being able to chunk down, just like you're saying with your program that you do, that we focus on little bits at a time, mm -hmm. right? Because if we don't, it can get overwhelming, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. you find, find out that if we focus on this task, and I've even actually had to say to my clients, okay, we're stopping right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because we've, we've filled up the cup and, and now I need you to go work and work on what we just worked on because now we're starting to get into a different ass of this and I do not want to muddy what we just talked about. Does that make sense at all? Or Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's focus on and, but also energy flows where your focus goes you're like uh, a walking meme i am a walking meme you know what my says i'm like a hallmark card <laughs> like a walking hallmark card like you I get plenty of sound bites when you start to edit these videos yeah totally i'll have them but it's true though you know it is true and and um you know but focus on focus on keeping your eye on the big prize that's what i tell people yeah, and it will get you there and I can get you there. But it's also a lot of times it's a bigger picture, too, of like, like we need to have a, a proper understanding. And sometimes I mean to tell you stuff that you're not going to want to hear, like your dog doesn't love you the way that you think it does, you know. And we're, we'll probably wrap this up here pretty soon. But I got a couple or a question here. Do you have any interest in competing in any sports? No. No? No, we do protection dogs. So it's a different sort of working it's not a sport dog it's a different job it's real deal shit real deal shit yeah so, so I, did, I did start training for the ph1 years ago but then covid hit and i couldn't travel and then we just did a lot more protection stuff and i enjoy that much more okay. Although i do i do love igp i love the technicalities of it the obedience i absolutely love it and that was probably the first sport i saw on like youtube and I was like, what is this? I saw the obedience. Um, but obviously for the bike work, I love Cam TV. Okay. Mm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't right now, no, because as well, we have children. We can't be traveling to train. And the culture in England for school is not, it's not great. It's a lot okay. of trials here, like um, local trials, not like proper, um, it's not a real good sport culture. There is for IGP, but I don't have any pedigree dogs right now either. So I'm not one to like go out and buy a new dog on a whim. Like there has to be a pure purpose for it. And I don't have time right now. If I was going to enter a sport, I want to get 100%. I want to get 100 points, you know? I don't yeah. want to just enter half ass it. Do it. Do it right or don't do it at all. Yeah. You are right here. I'm going to post up... Um... Make sure I post up a link to your Instagram as, as well here. So how can people, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Instagram. Okay. So that's what I'm posting up a link right there. And then is there anything else that you, we didn't talk about that you want to mention? I think we covered quite a lot. I think so too. I enjoyed this conversation. I this is going to be like 30 minutes, but it's been like an hour and 30 minutes. So uh, Yeah, yeah. We can. Do you know what? And we. Do you know? I bet we can continue on for another hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, now. that's that's 
Talking you know, jokes, isn't it? That's never, yeah. you never finished. You never that's where finished. that's why we do this, you guys. So you guys check out Gail. Make sure you're following her Instagram if you're not already. Check out her courses. And Gail, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna say goodbye so, to everyone. Give you a link to your book when you've uh, reformatted it. I will. Absolutely I will. I might even ask you to do a forward for me. Oh or, or, okay. Yeah. Okay. So my course, yeah. English literature degree to use. There you go. Yeah. So do that. And then I'm going to say goodbye to you on the other side here. So, but we'll say goodbye to everybody here. Bye, Bye everybody. Everyone. And then hold on one second.